I've been involved with the club since 1987. So I've been involved in AAF for probably 13 years. In 1978, Dr. Roach uh, convinced me to join the, at the time, the Ad Club. And she asked, me and one of the other younger, newer members to the club to come on board for the Addies. Um, and they roped me in from there on out, been involved ever since. So my first job out of college was with Clear Channel Radio here in Tuscaloosa, which is now iHeartMedia. Um, and uh, Lori Moore was my boss at the time, and she was really involved at the club. And also Angie Hughes was one of our account executives um, at the time there, and she was super involved in the club too. Keith Lacoste, Larry Murphy, a lot of the folks that worked there were on the board or very involved members. And when I came to work there as the sales assistant for the group, um, once I started getting to know them, they started inviting me to luncheons and after hours things um, and really sort of trying to get me to drink the Kool-Aid as they say in District 7. I got my very first real job, my boss, uh, Ted Roberts, he goes, I'm gonna take you to this meeting. It's a great group of people. Um, you really need to meet them. the things that will always be uh, close to my heart and special memories about um, AAFT is their commitment uh, over the years to public service. As a matter of fact, the first time I ever got involved with AdFed was through um, City Fest. Some of you may remember that we used to have a music festival downtown and it was called City Fest and they, um, I helped with the marketing one year for free and um, I went to the Ad Fed and asked if they would be willing to uh, take this on as a project. Of course they said yes and they did uh, the logos and the um, boards and the TV and everything and, and many of the items won um, Gold Addies that year. And of course, that uh, first year City Fest was extremely successful, and a large part of that was the Advertising Federation's um, commitment to the public service campaign. Uh, another great memory that I have from uh, AAF Tuscaloosa, we were then called the Tuscaloosa Ad Club. It was our 25th anniversary and I was fortunate enough to be president that year, and we invited Wally Snyder, who was then the president and CEO of the American Advertising Federation. We invited him down for our celebration, and he flew in from Washington, and uh, that was the first time we'd ever had uh, a national representative here in Tuscaloosa, and that was, uh, it was so nice, it was, it was a really big deal, so that was, really enjoyed that. We had a, uh, I was on the board, we had a, a, a board meeting at the Tuscaloosa Country Club, and myself, uh, Dennis Hall, Laura Cabanis, and I think that Ronnie Quarles was the fourth. We decided after the board meeting, rather than going back to work, we'd just play golf. So we played a, a guy around the golf that afternoon, and Dennis Hall came up with the idea of turning it into an annual outing and event. So each year we we played, uh, we started calling it the Joel Egg Mass Golf Classic and it kind of stuck 
and then I guess it was probably 10 years later when we realized we could generate money to help uh, students with uh, scholarships. So that, that's how that came to be. There's only been one hole in one to the job I mentioned. Anybody and, know who that is? No. Oh, was that, was that you? Hmm. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you win a TV? I did win a TV. Yeah. The other campaign that has always meant so much was the Smart Cookies campaign, who our dear friend who's no longer with us, Ronnie Quarles, sort of headed up. And uh, the Girl Scouts came to him and said, look, we're losing memberships, you know, what can we do? And they came up with this campaign. And it grew, not only grew the membership, but they now have an award they give called a Smart Cookie. And so um, it's carried over for the year, for over the years. And so that was, was very successful. Won a national award and we won money, which was fantastic. I did a quickie about a quick story about um, Dr. Roach. I had him for campaigns as well, and I uh, was so proud. I had a job lined up right before graduation, and I went to tell him, and I told him what it was, what the position was, and he was disappointed and said I could do better. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of people, I don't think, know this, but in the late 90s, say 1999 and the year 2000, our ad club was suffering some. The membership was down and we didn't have a lot of money. And um, at that time, I think Michelle was uh, state director and I was on the executive committee. And um, Jimmy, I think, had a national office. And so we had several people that were holding um, positions in the district. And so we came to the end of the year and we didn't have a president. And nobody wanted to be president <laughs> for the upcoming year. And so the club was in peril at that time. And I remember there were five uh, past presidents. It was Michelle, myself, Brad, uh, Jimmy and Joel Mask all got together and had lunch together and said, what are we going to do? We can't let the club go out of business and it's too important and what can we do? And so we all committed to do whatever, we all committed to doing whatever it took to get the club solvent again. And Brad served another um, uh, as president, another term as president. Michelle was president twice, I was president twice. So several of us um, stepped up in order to be sure that the club continued. And I think it's that kind of commitment and that kind of um, feeling of importance that what we're doing is important enough that in times of trouble that the, the um, old timers, especially us, would step up. And, um, and it took about a year or two years and then the club, you know, started doing better and uh, we had somebody who decided to become president, Angie Hughes, and, um, and, and, and here you are. So I think that the point is that uh, when, when times were tough, we were also committed to the cause that we uh, stepped up and that was something that I'll never forget about AdFed. Michelle Massey and Jimmy Warren.
Good evening and welcome to a special weekend update edition. Susan Tucker, former governor and chairman of the board, revisited. Last spring, Susan was officially recognized by the 7th District for her service as governor. To show how they felt about her aggressive and flamboyant style, the board of directors officially gave her the boot. While at the National Convention in Los Angeles in 2003, Susan became close friends with one of today's biggest rock stars. So here tonight to honor Susan and her Harry Hole Award, please welcome Kid Rock. <laughs> to recognize Susan for receiving the Harry Hoyle Award, President Bush announced today that she would be remembered in a permanent way. This famous landmark will forevermore now be called Mount Susan Tucker. You just won a Harry Hole and her name Susan, Susan Tucker. Tucker. We, we are, are here, here to, to cheer for you and give you, give you a big pucker. about Michelle is as energetic and passionate that she was about the ad set then, she's equally as passionate now. It, it has not waned in any way and uh, you know I can thank her for that. Uh, I was doing printing buying and uh, that Dan Kilgo had Craftsman Printing. Right. <laughs> and he had real gray hair and he was the old school, like a, to me he reminded me of old school newspaper man, but he had been in, in uh, specialties in printing for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, he told me about the ad club, so I went and started meeting people and uh, that it just kind of snowballed and that's where I met him all the way out. Somebody we haven't mentioned is the person who got me involved, and that's Susan Tucker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We were actually competitors. She was in radio, I was in radio, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Um, we're competitors, but friendly competitors, and she mentioned it to me one day, and I'm like, well, check it out. And I did, still here. Mm -hmm. And you know, one person I didn't talk about too that I wanted to talk about is the fossil, and you know, the old fossil, <laughs> who is Keep the Coast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then we worked together again many years later, but, and, and, and he's like my, my favorite person. Oh, yeah. He's also. the most chill. Oh, he's yeah. the most chill. I could be you freaking out be. running around all over the place and he's sipping a drink going, it's going to be all right. You cannot ruffle right. his feathers. Uh -uh. No. no. no he's he's always gets so under his head. And I was always worried he's not going to get anything done. I just know he's he, not. I know, I know he's he does. not. He just he gets things done. Yes. I have lots of uh, good memories for, with AAF. Um, one of the, my most favorite is when we uh, surprised Susan Daria with the Heilman um, Educator of the Year Award, um, which is a district level award. And uh, she had no idea she was getting, receiving the award. Uh, they started describing her and you could see as they gave more details about her, her um, dedication to the field, you could see the recognition on her face and it was priceless it was a very special moment i can tell you that the club was wonderful to us um, we sent several students to the multicultural awards the uh, top 50 multicultural student uh, award um, and i remember having a meeting and um, i think michelle massey and angie i think you were there um, they were instrumental in making some uh, decisions that enabled the student to take some um, some pocket change up there and in that particular year that student really appreciated that so I have always really appreciated that kind of heart with the capstone um, between the capstone ad fed and the Tuscaloosa ad fed they've always supported they've um, done the golf tournament for scholarships 
and it's meant a lot. Once you get on the board, then you sometimes have these opportunities to go to the district level conferences and national conferences. And so I've had the opportunity to go all over the southeast in District 7, um, wherever there have been different spring conventions. And, um, and then I was fortunate enough, too, to go to even a national convention in Las Vegas um, to represent the club. So it's been great getting to know professionals here in West Alabama, but throughout District 7, which is kind of the southeast, um, and also nationally. Um, one of my favorite memories, of course, was when we went on a cruise. Uh, we cruised down to Mexico, and <laughs> we had to be a mouth of the south, and we decided we were going to be pirates. I never thought I'd dress as a pirate and dance on stage, but I did. Okay, one of my favorites is going to Leadership Conference in Chattanooga, and um, so I bring my dog everywhere. I'm just throwing that out there. So I brought my dog. To, was, I think that was the first conference that I um, brought him to. But anyways, Tabitha found a banana somewhere at one, at one of the after hours, I think the little networking socials that they have. And she carried that thing, I think the whole conference. I know definitely all that night. And she was talking on it like a phone and it was her banana phone. And she kept going up to people, asking people to talk on her <laughs> banana phone. Yeah, the banana phone was a super fun uh, after hours thing. They had like a fruit bowl and I was just in a silly mood that day and I picked up the banana and it was like my conversation starter uh, for the rest of the night. Um, at all of the conferences, they usually have like an evening dinner or something and then after that, they usually have a hospitality suite. And so um, I love to talk to new people and meet new people, but sometimes it's sort of awkward when you're in that situation and there are people from lots of other cities. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna use this banana to like disarm people. <laughs> and so I would walk up to someone that I didn't know that was a member of the club and I would say, hi, there's a call for you. <laughs> and I would hold the banana up to them and you know, really you could judge uh, whether they were playing with you or not. <laughs> some of them would take the banana and talk to the banana and then some of them weren't having it. So that was how I chose my friends that evening. <laughs> In high school, I was really involved in our yearbook staff, um, and I always felt at home, like I could be my full self in that environment. And in college, I didn't really ever find that sort of family to bond with, um, and so I really um, had not felt that since that group. And, and when I joined AAF, I really like felt that same sort of sense of community and, and that bond with people, um, and the ability to really be my whole self and to put my whole self into the club and, and in volunteering and doing things for the advertising community um, and also the larger community as a whole. Well, for me, um, not going to school at Alabama, not being from Tuscaloosa and being new to Tuscaloosa, um, it was a place for me to meet Tuscaloosa and get to know the advertising and public relations community in Tuscaloosa. Uh, over the years, people became my business contacts um, and professional friends, and then really they became my friend friends. There's so many people in the group who um, I now consider close friends, and I never thought I would find that in a professional organization. So the very first conference I got to go to was on a cruise, um, so that was a pretty big start. I loved getting to know all the local members, but I've also really enjoyed all the district conferences um, because it's given me an idea of other cities in the southeast, a lot of other people that I wouldn't have normally met in different professions, and a broader grasp probably of advertising and our industry and how we all work together. Uh, AAF Tuscaloosa means to me is a, a chance because I, <clears throat> I didn't know anyone outside the faculty so a chance to network and to meet people who are in the business in, the, uh, in this area and um, to create those relationships because that's one of the things I really wanted to get uh, from being a member was to, um, to have a chance to meet people who are in the business and um, get to know them better. AAF Tuscaloosa was the first uh, professional organization that I was ever in and uh, I feel like this club is my, my family. I've made lifelong friends in this club and uh, through this club I feel like I've been able to uh, learn more about the Tuscaloosa community over the years and uh, it's helped me with my business. It has uh, helped me in so many, so many different ways and it's just been invaluable to me, it really has.